Hello everyone, it's Anbu and I'm back with another video. I hope you guys are all doing well. In this video I'm going to be teaching you how to say sorry in 30 different ways. Before we get straight into this video, hit that subscribe button and that bell icon to be the first ones to be informed about my English, grammar and British accent videos. Now, sorry is not a word. You know, I've always been taught that um, from such a young age that sorry is not a word, it's, a, it's an emotion, it's a feeling and you feel sorry. And I feel like the way we say sorry to people, um, the way we say it can really affect the meaning of the word and how the other person feels. Similar to my thank you video which I made a few months ago on all the different ways that you can say thanks. This video is similar because you can really vary just how sorry you feel. Um, maybe you can feel a little bit sorry uh, for doing like a, a very minor thing um, or you can you have to express the fact that you're very sorry because you made such a big mistake. Also, another thing is that British people apologise a lot. Um, I know that's a stereotype um, that everybody has heard of, that British people apologise for everything. And it's funny because I do think that we use the word sorry for everything in our day-to-day -day life. If you bump into someone or, um, sorry, I was wondering if you could do that for me. Or um, if someone's interrupted you, be like, oh, sorry, I haven't finished. Sorry, I haven't finished. Even though you haven't done anything wrong and the other person's interrupted you, you would still be like, it's quite common for British people to say, oh, sorry, I haven't finished. <laughs> so we do use sorry a lot. So British people, they will apologise for various reasons. One, if you did something wrong. But two, if you bumped into someone on the street. Three, if you want to get someone's attention. So you might say, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, can I just grab you for a second? Oh, sorry, are you busy? And number four is when you want to sympathise with someone. So if the situation is not that severe, then number one is you would say, sorry, that's obvious. And number two is, oh, whoops, whoops. And number three is, sorry about that. And if it really isn't a big deal, then you'd be like, oh, sorry about that, sorry about that. As in, when you say it quickly, if you drop the A sound, you drop the A in about, so you would say, sorry about that, sorry about that. And notice how I have the glottal stop at the end of um, the word that. So I kind of go, Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Number four is, I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. This one, depending on the tone, can come across quite rude as well. So if you say, I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Um, <laughs> British teachers tend to use this one a lot. If the student's back chatting to them, um, then they'll be like, I beg your pardon. Now, there's lots of different informal ways that you can say sorry. So number five is, my bad. Oh, my bad. But it's not much of a big deal, then you would say, oh, that's my bad. Or if you forgot to do something, then you can say, oh, sorry, that was my bad. Um, you can also say, my fault, that was my fault. And number seven, you can even say, soz. <laughs> um, you can use this in, when you're texting. Um, and I've actually heard people say soz in real life as well as kind of like a joke. It's like, oh, soz, when you're being sarcastic. Um, you can use it with friends um, in like a very informal setting. Uh, soz is short for sorry. Let's move on to the more serious ways of saying sorry. So number eight is, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. Number nine is, that was my mistake. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm so sorry, that was my mistake. And this one is, you're literally admitting that the mistake was yours. Um, and you admit that it is a mistake. And if you, I think the person who's going to accept your apology, um, if, you, if they can hear you say that it was your mistake and that you, you've been the better person and you've done the good thing of just like admitting it and that's a good one to use, it was my mistake. It's blunt, it's straight to the point and you're apologising. Number 10 is, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, that expresses your concern, it expresses the fact that you feel so bad. Number 11 is, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Number 12 is, I apologise, I apologise, I had that wrong. I had that wrong. Number 14 is, I owe you an apology. I owe you an apology. That was wrong of me. That was wrong of me. Number 16 is, I hope you can forgive me. I think this one's used for really severe situations where you really have done something wrong. And 
I hope you can forgive me. I think the word forgiveness is really strong. Um, so I think when you use the word forgive in your apology, it, it comes across uh, really meaningful. And I think it just, I think it will mean a lot to the person if you, if you kind of ask for their forgiveness. Number 17, you really have to judge the situation with this one, I think. Um, this one is, please don't be mad at me. Please don't be mad at me. Now, people, you know, respond to different situations in different ways. And if your friend or family member or your colleague is really angry at you and they've stopped talking to you, um, please don't be mad at me. Um, I don't tend to use this one because at the end of the day, if you've done something wrong, then you can't really dictate whether they should be mad at you or not. That's just my opinion. Um, so I like to use the one, I hope you can forgive me. Um, please don't be mad at me. It's like, well, no, they have every right to be mad at you if you've done something wrong. Um, so you can only ask for their forgiveness. And number 18 is, I'm terribly sorry. I'm terribly sorry. Number 19 is, you can actually write this in an email or in a letter. It's really, really formal. It's, please accept my sincere apologies. And number 20, I really like this one because at the end of the day, these, these, these are just words. Now, this one, you're really asking them how you can put it right. So this one is, how can I make it right? So you're, you've accepted, you've apologised and you've accepted that you've, you've done something wrong and now you want to move on and you want to kind of make amends. So you kind of ask them, you know, how can, I, how can I put it right? What can I do to make it up to you? Now this leads on to the next section, which is gestures. We've just gone through words, but you can show that you're sorry in so many different ways. You can put your hand over your mouth and say, I'm just like, shake your head. Like, I'm so sorry. Um, if you want to sympathize with someone, um, if, if unfortunately, if there's been a tragedy in their life and they've lost lost someone, for example, you can put your hand over your mouth and say, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for your loss. You can put your hand over your heart and say, I'm so sorry for your loss. I think it's all about eye contact as well. So how you connect with them on that personal level. You provide them with your eye contact. Don't look away when you're talking to them. I think that's really, really rude. Um, especially when you're apologising if you've done something wrong. Um, you're not going to be like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, no, you look at them. They deserve that respect and yes you might be ashamed but you need to own up to what you did and you just need to look at them in the eye and that can be really hard um but it's really rude if you don't it's really rude if you're just kind of like looking away and just like mumbling like you're upon no you just just own the apology number 24 is if you're if you want to sympathize with them um and to show that you're shocked you can widen your eyes people express their shock in lots of different ways People might put their hands on their heads, um, but widening your eyes is, is a really good way of doing that too. Now, linking into number 20, which was how can I make it right? Uh, this next section is things that you can do to make it right and let this person know that you're sorry. So that's number 25 is cards, write them a card, um, write down that you're, you're sorry. Number 26 is flowers. I mean, he doesn't like flowers. <laughs> number 27, chocolates or just a gift. It really depends on the situation and your level of friendship as well. Number 28. So, okay, I actually did this one. Um, I upset a friend once and without going into too much detail about what I did, um, and then I was, at the end of the day, I was really sorry. So what I did was I went to their house. I literally went to their house. Um, I just think texting them and uh, I, just, I just don't think that's very personal, especially when you've done something wrong. Um, so I literally went to their house and uh, cooked them dinner. Um, I was like, look, you relax. Like, I'm gonna cook you dinner. I literally brought like, literally I brought, I brought everything, did like a whole food shop and like, I cooked them dinner. And um, yeah, we had a really lovely night and we're still best friends. Number 29 is persistence. If they haven't accepted your apology, then if this person really means a lot to you, then you can be persistent, give them time, give them space, but you don't just apologise once and then move on. Um, depending on the situation, I think it's sometimes really good to be persistent. If you allow it time and space, but you also let them know that you care about them and that they mean a lot to you, then you can be persistent and you can apologise more than once. And number 30. 
the last one, the last tip, the last way to say sorry. The last way to say sorry is don't do it again. Don't do the same mistake again. I think that's such a bad character trait. Like, if you've, apo if you've apologised for something and someone's forgiven you, and you're doing the same thing again, no matter what that, no matter what it is, and no matter how small it is, if you don't learn from your mistakes, then I don't think that I, I, don't, I think that's re, I think that's really bad. <laughs> like, learn from your mistakes, and mistakes aren't a bad thing. You know, Pe everyone makes to makes mistakes. We're all human, and it's all about how we learn from that and how we learn from those experiences and. If you're that, if you're that, if you're, if you're like a repeat offender and you're constantly making the same mistakes and you're just saying sorry, you're not really feeling sorry, you're just saying sorry, people are going to pick up on that and it's, it's a bloody good way to push people away um, if you're constantly making the same mistakes. That was if you are the one apologising. I've also got a video coming up um, explaining how to accept an apology and there's lots of different ways that you can accept an apology and whether you should accept an apology in the first place, right? Um, so I'm going to be covering all of that in my next video, so uh, hit that subscribe button to make sure you're up to date with all my latest videos. Um, I really want to hit my 100k subscriber target soon, so you guys can help me with that. You guys have been asking for a preposition video as well, so I'm going to be working on that soon. And as always, I wanted to leave you with one last message, and that's to love your identity, and I'll see you in next week's video on Thursday and Saturday at 5pm GMT. Until next time guys, cheerio! This is Paddington, change for the Bakerloo Line and National Rail Services.